Boss mistreats new guys so new guys get boss demoted and then fired. So back in my 20s I worked for a large national sewer and drain company called Roto-Rooter, a great job, and a great place to work where I was lucky enough to be trained by some of the most skilled technicians in the industry. There was however one supervisor let's call him Billy, now Billy was your typical kiss up, who spent most of his time trying to please anyone who he thought held any influence, the senior techs, or power, the branch and regional manager, and loved to lord his power, he made the shift schedules and scheduled time off over anyone who he thought he could push it around. A typical interaction with one of the big earners, this is a commission job, would be something like hey you need a day off? Sure just let me know when and I will be happy to help you. While if he was dealing with a new hire, or a low earner you were lucky if he would pick up the phone or take a second to hear you out. So one night around my third month on the job I was sent to a mortuary to do some work, and while it was gross, hazard jobs like that paid really well, maybe $200 in your pocket for an hour's work. When it was done, I called and told him I was taking the rest of the night off due to some chemicals in their sewer making me feel a little woozy and I didn't think it would be safe for me to operate heavy machinery, he flipped out and told me that if I didn't get back on the road I would have a disciplinary hearing the next day, to which I said sure can't wait to see you there. As soon as I walked in I requested someone from HR be present as well as our assigned safety officer. The safety officer position in the company is very important as the company self-insures and any safety violation can get you fired on the spot. I let Billy go first and he says you can't leave whenever you want from your shift, you are getting a warning and next time I am going to fire you. I calmly reach into my bag and pull out our employee handbook and begin to read, while I don't remember the exact phrasing it goes something like this if you feel at any time that the situation or job you are in slash on is dangerous, or may lead to a dangerous situation you are to stop immediately. There was another section about being inebriated, exposed to methane gas from the sewer, being lightheaded etc. and how you should go home and not operate any equipment under those conditions, it even went so far as to say that transportation would be paid for by the company if you didn't feel safe driving, they were very big on safety since any insurance claims would be paid by them directly. I asked the safety manager if I did anything wrong and he supported me 100%, then I asked HR what they thought and they said, if it's a safety issue you go home and don't worry about your shift. At this point the regional manager asked me to leave the office and I hear him rip into Billy like a fat kid into cake. That should have been enough for me, but I am petty. I never forgive and I am very patient. As time goes on I become one of the top earners in my city, get rookie of the year my first year and salesman of the year my second, and Billy gets a reputation of being lazy, and irresponsible. My second year at the company Billy is put on probation and this is where I go into pro revenge mode, I gather up all the new guys and some of my buddies from my shift and I organize them so at least once or twice a week someone goes in there to complain about Billy, we never lied, we just knew what buttons to push to get him to self-destruct, new guys would ask for a day off, or someone would take a sick day during a busy shift etc. Finally the branch manager snaps and calls Billy into his office, he demotes him to salesman and puts him on my shift. At a company like this the shifts become very close, we all talk in our trucks through our radios while waiting for jobs, and we all help each other when needed. During Billy's first few weeks on the road, our supervisor makes sure he gets all the fun jobs. Flooded basements, tight spaces, and generally anything that will get him absolutely covered in poop. And of course as all this was happening I had every single person I was friends with at the company call him and ask him for scheduling changes so he had to explain to about 30 people how he was demoted and no longer a manager. Eventually Billy broke, he started crying to the dispatcher about how he couldn't take it anymore and quit. The next day me and two other guys threw a Billy's Gone party with cake and pizza at a neighborhood bar, put up signs in the office and made a general announcement in the morning when we went into hand in paperwork when we knew Billy would be there to give in his two weeks notice, he actually came up to us to thank us, and I got the pleasure of informing him that he's not invited. It's not a going away party, it's a you're gone party. It wouldn't make sense for you to be at a party where we are celebrating you not being around anymore. In the end only about 20 of the 50 employees at the branch showed up, but it was still a great party. Surprise! I fixed it, you brat! Running late for school, Jackie rushes into the kitchen with her uniform half on, and frantically looking around for her backpack and missing shoe. Barb, Mom, shouts, Jackie! Dad needs to drive his own car today, you have to take the Ford to school. The Ford was a beat-up sedan that had been passed down from sibling to sibling to sibling for well over a decade before it got to Jackie. What was once a great new car, was now just barely street legal. The speedometer wavered up and down, only one window worked, 
it struggled to reach 50 miles per hour, and the trunk would pop open every 5 miles or so. What? I can't drive that thing. I had to stop four times on my way to school yesterday, to close the stupid trunk. It's so embarrassing, Jackie yelled. She would rather die than show up to school in such a piece of crap. You see, Jackie was the youngest and the only one still living at home. Barb was counting down the days for Jackie to graduate and get out of the house. Sal, Jackie's dad, just wanted Barb and Jackie to stop trying to kill one another. He was trying to prepare for a job interview he had later that morning. Sal had been on dozens of interviews in the two years since being laid off. After unemployment ran out, Sal took a job he was overqualified for and paid a fraction of his old salary. Money was tight and he was trying desperately to find something in his field again. Jackie was still attending a very expensive private high school, where all of her siblings had gone to. Jackie's tuition had been arranged and set aside by her grandparents when Sal lost his job. Of course Jackie never mentioned this or the status of her dad's employment to anyone. All of her friends came from wealthy families, drove brand new cars, and had moms that weren't constantly screaming. She secretly wanted what they had. She wanted the life her siblings had when they were in high school. Instead, Jackie got a job and was responsible for all her own expenses. Barb had a very strict, don't ask for money rule. Jackie began feeling sorry for herself and complained a lot, especially about driving the Ford. Sal felt guilty about their financial situation so he'd been allowing Jackie to drive his car so she wouldn't have to suffer driving the Ford. For roughly 10 months, Sal drove the Ford so Jackie could maintain the facade she felt so strongly about. Occasionally, she'd have to drive the Ford which was always a temper tantrum. The morning of Sal's interview, Jackie was forced to drive the Ford and immediately called home when she arrived to school. She wanted Barb and Sal to know just how awful life was and everything is just so unfair. Wah! Wow. Sal decided he was going to run by Jackie's school once he got out of his interview. He mentioned this to Barb and then gathered up a bag of items from the garage before leaving the house. Around lunchtime, Jackie gets a message from the office. Your dad came by and left this note for you. Jackie, I came by to fix the trunk for you. You won't have any more problems with it popping open. Drive safely, love you. Dad. When school let out, Jackie walked through the parking lot and found the Ford with several new improvements. The trunk had been tied shut with ten or so bungee cords and several very thick layers of duct tape. The front bumper was wrapped in yellow rope, each of the doors had been outlined in duct tape, and covered a back window with plastic to make it look broken. He finished it off with a red flag hanging off the back. It didn't happen right away, but Jackie did learn an extremely valuable lesson that day. Her friends thought Sal was hilarious and loved seeing Jackie's reaction. This happened 16 plus years ago and I now have a child of my own. I hope to be even half the parent he is.